Ah, oh, hell, you again? That's me, you got it. How you doing, buddy? Good. What we got? Okay, this is a Colt third model Dragoon. Man, I can just imagine being an early settler, maybe even a cowboy. The condition of the gun overall is better than average. It's historically significant, and hopefully that means a lot of value. I keep coming back here because, hey, they bought a few guns for me. What can I say? You know, I can only buy new guns if I sell guns, so it works. It's a real interesting story when it comes to the gun itself. This is what made Colt successful. Pretty much every adventure he had before this failed. They came up with the Colt Walker, it was a 44 caliber, one of the most powerful handguns ever made up until the 1930s. The problem was, is the gun was so powerful, you put so much black powder in it that it would blow up the cylinder. <laughs> So they had to redesign it, and they came up with Dragoon. When you came from the Walker, which, like you say, tended to blow apart, to suddenly have a gun that you could count on to use, mm -hmm. everybody wanted these guns. Yeah. Military bought a huge number of them, civilians bought them, and basically Colt couldn't produce enough of them. The Dragoon is the quintessential Colt. It was the most powerful handgun on the market for almost 100 years. If you wore one of these on your hip in the Old West, you were pretty much the man. This gun is identified and has a name on the back strap here, J.P. Coles. Refresh me, he sounds familiar. He was one of the original Texas land grant holders given to American citizens by Mexico so that Americans could move into Texas. What you have here is real interesting, man. This gun is pretty badass to begin with, but add the J.P. Coles inscription, we can be talking a lot of money. So that's what you got. Sounds like you're sold. You want to pay me anything I want, I take it, right? <laughs> well, how much do you want for it? Well, I can take 13000 for it. And the reason for that is because you've got to put a value on that identification. It does come into play. We have one problem with these guns. It is probably one of the most faked guns that they possibly make in the world. They make replicas, they make counterfeits. People take the replicas and then turn them into counterfeits. It's, uh, it's just one of those guns that there's so many of them faked out there. I'm gonna have to have somebody come in and take a look at it. Okay, you're calling in your usual gun guy? Yeah, he'll come down, he'll tell you what it's worth. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll try. All, All right. right, I'll be back. Thanks. They're bringing in Craig, who I've met several times here, although I don't always agree with his opinion and hopefully there won't be a fist fight and I won't get arrested. You again. Almost good to see you. We got to stop meeting like That's this. That's right. So what do we got, Corey? Cold Dragoon, third Cold model. Dragoon. You got it. With uh, J.P. Coles on the grip. Oh, yeah. That's nice. You don't usually see that. You know, this was really Colt's last chance to make a good pistol, and he did it, and people liked it. I think one of my biggest concerns is I know there's a lot of fake ones out there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. With this particular gun, the easiest way to look at the aging would just be to look at the engraving. The roll engraving was applied using a rolling stamp, OK? The reproductions weren't made that way. They usually did machine engraving. So if you look carefully on the cylinder, you can see some very, very fine ridges under close magnification. And if you see those, it means it was rolled engraved. And if it was rolled engraved, it's a real gun. OK. OK, so very easy. Take a look. I have an answer for you in a second. And what do you see? I like what I see. It's real. OK. What do you think it's worth? Gun's worth about 8500 bucks. You know, I don't agree with that at all. An identified Dragoon is incredibly rare, very difficult to find. This guy is historically pretty significant. I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. The importance of this name is also in the eye of the collector. Well, Craig, man, I appreciate you coming Corey, in. Corey, it's a pleasure. Rob, nice seeing you again. Nice to see you. Right. Well, maybe not so nice, but it's OK. <laughs> Rob is a good example of a collector. I'm not a collector. I'm a dealer. While he might buy one or two guns a month or maybe one or two guns a year, I'm buying hundreds. And oftentimes, we look at things very differently. So what will you take for the gun? I'm sorry, but I very strongly disagree with what he had to say. Can you go any lower than 13000 Maybe a few hundred dollars, and, and that's it. 
So you can't do 8,500? I can't do it. Even if you were a beautiful woman, I couldn't do it. So no. Could you go nine? And I can't even do nine. Uh, I'd go $12,400. $12,400. Well, we tried, my man. All right. Thanks a bunch. You bet. Appreciate it. Next time. OK. And I understand, as a buyer, you've got to be conservative. So I don't hold a grudge, but I don't have to make a deal either.